Hey everyone, it's John, and today what I want to do is discuss some ISIS design principles. Now, this video is certainly not going to be exhaustive, but what I hope to do is give you some kind of introduction into how to approach ISIS design, as well as how it compares to OSPF. So, I think maybe the best way to start this video is to draw some comparisons with OSPF, since you'll probably be more familiar with that. Now, both protocols ISIS and OSPF are very similar in that they're both link state protocols and they use the Dijkstra algorithm. Now they do have a uh, concepts of backbone concepts the difference is with OSPF you have a backbone area and with ISIS you have backbone routers. Now what does that mean? Okay so let's quickly just recap on OSPF. Now you'll be familiar of course with area zero this would be a backbone area Okay, so we'd have area zero here, and you'd have a bunch of routers scattered throughout this, and you would also have connected maybe another area here, we'd call this one area two. And for good measure, let's add a third one, we'll have area one. Okay, so we've got three areas here. Now, with OSPF, everything must connect to area zero, okay? So if we added in more areas, we're going to be going here and then another area we'd be adding, we'd want to go here because they've all got to be touching area zero and they'd be connected via things called ABRs, which are area border routers, which would be on the border of one area and another. So it'd be here, here, here. Okay. So that would be the first thing. So you'd have an area, a backbone area. Okay. So let's just go back. And let's give a little uh, design scenario with that. So with OSPF, let's say we've got area zero. And area zero has got some routers for the backbone of the USA. See, we're a company, okay? And our main operations are in the United States. So we've got these routers, which are going to act as purely kind of backbone routers in the US. And now... Because we've got multiple sites, we're going to branch off and break up into kind of geographical areas. So, do you know what, I'll just write area 1, or rather area 0 here. So area 0 is here. And we break off. So we've got another area here. And let's just say this is for our west coast routers. Okay, so we've got a main US core here. USA core. And we've got the West Coast, so we've got some routers which are from, I don't know, Las Vegas, uh, Los Angeles, uh, Sacramento, uh, San Francisco, all these West Coast sites. And of course, we're going to have an ABR which connects to, this could be Area 1, okay? So it's going to be interfacing Area 1 and an Area 0, and that's going to have some summarization. So we're going to summarize our West Coast routes into our core. That would be all fine. And let's say we've also got one for the East Coast. So we've got another area here, same kind of deal. And this is area two. And um, what we do, use this colour. And we've got our ABR here as well. And we've got some sites in New York, maybe Boston. And because East Coast, well, it's not East Coast USA, we're going geographically towards the East. We've also got a site in the UK because we've got a, we're trying to branch out and we've got a site in the UK and also maybe a main site in Germany. Okay, so we've got a European presence. And we're still going to group that under East Coast because geographically we're going East and we don't have enough to justify an entire um, European site just yet. Okay, so this is all fine. So our kind of East Coast stuff is going into the... Oh, uh, change the colour of that. Our East Coast stuff is getting summarised into the core. Our West Coast is getting summarised into the core. And everyone's working. It's just working just fine now. Now, let's say we have... And like I say, let's just say this is the Germany site, remember. It's going to be important. So, Germany. Now, the company that we work for expands. And we now want to have a presence in Asia. So, we try to have a site in India, okay? And is a very uh, big important country so we'll have a site in there and we'll grab one here so we've got a presence in India now here's the thing with OSPF we've got some design limitations here 
Okay, so if we want to have an area here, we're going to have to make it touch area zero because everyone's got to com come back to the backbone area, okay? So the selection we've got here is we could perhaps buy a link from one of the core routers all the way to India. Now, it may just be that buying a link from the center of America right all the way over to India is going to cost a lot of money, okay? Just, the, just the, the link is going to cost a lot of money because of where it is. Now, we might decide that for reasons of saving money, we want to link our Indian site through Germany because we can get a much cheaper connection to tie Germany to India than we can go from USA direct to India. So we want to go through this uh, German site, okay? Now the problem is, is that this site, okay, so we've got Germany, this now becomes an ABR, and we've got a new area here, okay? So we'll call this area three. So we've got India connecting through Germany into here. Now the problem is, if you probably realized already, is OSPF, you need to touch the core. So this area doesn't actually touch area zero. It's connected to area zero through area two, but it doesn't connect area two directly touches area zero, area one directly touches area zero, so they're fine, they're fine, this one is not fine. So we've got a problem here, these sites here will not be able to reach into the core because it's not connected. So here's the issue, the solutions we might have would be to build a virtual link through area two, so now all of area two has to become a virtual link. Now, if you know OSPF, this is kind of considered to be a workaround solution, not a full-time solution because you get additional computation, it increases complexity, it's harder to troubleshoot. This is not optimal at all. So it should only ever be used as a kind of stopgap to fix something, okay? A kind of uh, a band-aid on a problem. It's not a, it's not a proper solution. Okay, so we decide that this is not a good idea. So the other solution we've got, apart from buying the expensive link, from America to India is we actually extend our area zero to encompass area two, okay? So now we've got a much larger area zero, which means that sites formally in area two can't be summarized into the core because it's link state. We need to have everything be the same, okay? So we can't summarize anymore. And we've also got a bigger domain, so our SPF calculations are going to be different. So say we've got a one link over um, over the Atlantic between America and the the UK. A flapping link will call will basically cause an entire SPF recalculation amongst the core, which could potentially destabilize the core. We don't want that. So we've got all these problems with OSPF. Okay, so we can buy the expensive link, we can create a virtual link, or we can extend the core and make it potentially unstable. So here's how the problem would look in IS, IS, okay? And you're going to see it's going to be a lot easier solved. Now what I'm going to do is, now remember what I said with IS, IS, we have backbone routers, not backbone areas. And backbone routers are just routers which carry the level two database. They can be level one slash level two or just level two dedicated. As long as they're carrying that, L, that L2, the backbone is still held intact. So the backbone has to remain unbroken. You can't have a break in the backbone, but it, ha it can be level one, level two, or just level two and extend. And you're gonna see how this works. So let's do the same thing again. We've got the same thing we've got on a US core, and I'm gonna call it area one because there's no such concept as an area zero backbone. Any area can be a backbone as long as it's got backbone routers, okay? So we'll just call this area one this time, but it's still gonna be our US core. Now, we've got the same thing. We've got our west coast here. Actually, better. Actually, I could draw that a bit better because it's not really attached the same way. So we've got our backbone here. Sorry, uh, area two here. I'm saying backbone first. <laughs> and we've also got our east coast area, which will be area three this time, okay? Now, what we would do in the case of this, we would have these routers here in area one because it's going to be a backbone area. They're just for summarization. So there would be L2 and oh, let's 
10. And this will also be L2. Okay, so they're only going to hold summarized roots, L2 roots, okay? And we have a router here and a router here. And this router would be L1 slash L2 and L1 slash L2. And now we could have all our routers here within this could be our Nevada router, our LA router, and they'd all be connected into the L1, L2. Same again, we'd have our New York and our Boston and our UK and our German. And this would be L1, L2, and these would all be L1s, okay? Now the same problem arises whereby we want to have a presence in Asia and we decide to set up shop in India. So we have our router here for India and we're going to set up a whole backbone in India. Now here's the thing, see with ISIS, we can actually fix this problem by, see this German router here? See just by changing this simple command IS type and change it from IS type level 1 to level 1 slash 2. We've now effectively brought level 2 in here. So we've actually extended the backbone here and the backbone here. So now we can have a dedicated summarization core in here. So effectively we've got here as a USA core. We can now have an Asian core here for uh, in India and we can branch off into Japan and China and South Korea and have all these sites here and all these sites. And the thing is, is that we can summarize just here. We can summarize just here and we can just chain these all together because they're all actually connected. The level two database remains unbroken. So effectively in OSPF, the backbone looks like this. It's an area, okay? And everything has to keep touching that area. And if you build on another site, which doesn't touch that area, you're gonna to have to make a change with this area by making a virtual link or extend the backbone to go here. It now becomes cumbersome, okay? Because it's one big contiguous block with ISIS. The backbone really does look much more like a backbone, it's like a spine. You've got these routers and you have a path and you can break off into here and you can break off into here and just chain off and just keep adding to the backbone. It's not one continuous block, it's just one big continual line and you can just, just keep uh, adding to it. So, like I say, as a design principle, and I've got this topology here, in the next video I'm going to be configuring this, okay? So effectively, what we've got here is the reds are level 2, the red and greens are level 1 slash 2, and the greens are just level 1, okay? So what I'm going to do is, let's say beforehand, this would just be a level 1 router, okay? So all it would have, and we didn't have this site just yet, this site just didn't exist, this was not a presence yet. So this is the way we're working. We've got our core here for summarization, we've got our east coast summarization going here, our west coast summarization here. These routers, if there was a connection between here, that would be fine. We could have the routes between internal routers for any network outside of our area. We'd pass it to the nearest level one, level two. These would be summarized into here and we just pass it and route through here, okay? Now, like I say, that would be fine. But if we establish that presence in Asia, what we do is change this router here, the German router, to be a level one and level two, okay? So by doing that, we effectively extend that backbone. You see that? See the red is just continual. We've got some red here and we can just break in here. Now we can have dedicated summarization, just like we've got dedicated summarization. And we've got two backbone areas which are just dedicated to summarization. But it's completely fine because all a backbone area is is a, a router. It's just an area which just contains nothing but level 2 routers. As long as that level 2 summarization, as long as that level 2 um, configuration, should I say, remains unbroken, we're completely fine, okay? So like I say here, if we thread that through here, through here, through here, it's just breaking off like I was drawn. See that? It's, just, it's all one big unbroken line. You can just keep adding to it. Whereas if this router here was just level one, okay? You would see that for our backbone. This would all be fine. We could here, but once we get here, to get 
to this here, we'd need to basically go through here, and this would be broken here, so we'd have an unbroken link here, that would be wrong. So the way we just do that is just convert this router here, and now we've got the option of, like I said, not an OSPF, we don't need to extend this area, we can still have a nice tight summarised area here, and this can be summarised. We don't need to have an expensive link directly between the core of the US to India, and everything just becomes a lot more simpler, okay? So that's just a brief introduction into why we use ISIS and o versus OSPF, just to give you a little bit of a feel. And the next video, what I'm going to do is actually do the configuration of that, okay? So you can actually see what works and how you do it and how we do the actual summarization. Okay, doc? So I understand this video might be confusing because it's hard to get your head around, but hopefully once you see the configuration, it might help you. Okay, doc? So that's the end of the video. Thanks very much, and I'll see you guys soon. Bye-bye.